Hello everybody, my name is Ursa Ryan and today we are embarking on one big game indeed. That's right, this is a 20 player map of the Mediterranean. It's a beautiful map, it's massive, we're playing as the new Egypt under Ramesses. It's a true start location where Egypt should be. This is going to be creating a massive Egyptian empire. Plus, today, we're playing with a few modes that we don't normally play with. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this, it could be nuts, it could be mental. But with 20 players, you bet, this is going to be an event. Now I've heard Ramesses, I've heard Ramses, you're going to have to just accept that people say it differently, but whoever it is, it's wonderful, 15% culture when constructing buildings and 30% when constructing wonders. But something you need to know about these abilities, when comparing it to Ptolemaic Cleopatra, they are not as fun, okay? Cleopatra was all about playing in a really interesting way. This ability is just straight up good. It may not be exceptionally exciting, but it's good. And the reason it's good is because this chunk of culture can basically hide any sin in your empire. You don't need to really get culture because culture will be unlocked just by existing. The bigger and more industrious and capacity ridden, the more chunky and wide your empire, the more this will fire off. And that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be completely going against how we played the last game as Egypt. Going to floodplains, using yields, using preserves. No, no, I refuse. We're going to build everything. Everything on rivers, districts and wonders, extra production on those. It's going to be beautiful. This Egypt, this Egypt is going to be an industrious and district filled powerhouse. Deity difficulty, standard speed, apocalypse mode, dramatic ages, and the tech and civic shuffle. I, I, this is, I don't know why I'm putting both apocalypse mode and dramatic ages on. This could be an absolute mess. I haven't played with either in ages. Especially because dramatic ages has been fixed now. There used to be a policy card later into the game that totally ruined the mode and stopped you from building districts. It has been fixed now. And I used to love this mode. I'm really looking forward to that. I have no gameplay modes on today, or mods I should say, the modes I just went through. Gameplay mods, this is a base game of Civ, but if you want to play along, you will need two mods to help with the map. Yet not another maps pack, and also Saf. Oh, Saf. Skylar, you amazing map maker. I love you to bits. Mare Nostrum. Come over to Discord, I've got the save file, I've got the full list. Let's just get cracking. But before we get started today, I need to tell you about something concerning. Here is Ursa Bear. Ursa Bear was going about their daily life, chomping on crisps, playing Civ 6, when disaster struck. Ursa Bear was unfairly expelled from Oxford University's Civ 6 program. Sad, alone, scared, Ursa Bear made his way to the fabled promised land, the University of Sankor. But there was a catch. The head of the University of Sankor, the vampire Lord Sucklington, refused to let Ursa Bear attend. Without 50,000 subscriptions on his application to enroll, Ursa Bear did not qualify for their world leading education. The University of Sankor takes only the best. Will you help Ursa Bear stick it to Oxford? Will you subscribe today? Thank Thank you, and back to the video. Now as much as I like to think about turn one, this is a TSL map, stands for true start location. All 20 players are in their true starting locations today. Are we going to have a powerful France, a Rome, Phoenicia? We don't know, but everyone is in true starts. I guess I probably should start in the true start as well. So as much as I probably would move off this rice, I will plonk straight down. As you can see, it does give me three food, one production. That's not bad when working the two, two tile of the deer as well, it's not a bad capital, it will grow to a certain extent. Now immediately there are a couple of things we need to think about. Apocalypse mode, this means the world will start to flood immediately. We'll start on tier one of world climate. Now unfortunately the climate button isn't working. I can't use it, which is really annoying. I don't know which mod is interfering with this at the moment. If anybody's had this issue, let me know because I think there's something that has been updated recently. But it means we're going to have hurricanes, floods, fires, tornadoes, anything possible, including a lot of desert storms. We are of course course on the northern continent, or the northern side of the continent of Africa. A lot of desert storms will be heading our way. So apocalypse mode is difficult enough as it is. Dramatic ages, however, is terrifying. If I don't hit a golden age, I will lose 40% of my cities heading into a dark age, flipping against me. 40%. 10 cities, that's four of them gone immediately. It is 
terrifying and normally getting a golden age of the ancient era is very very tricky. Now we have two choices. Either I take the coward's way out and I say there's no way I'm going to be getting golden age. There's no point settling a second city. I'm going to keep my capital and we're going to start settling in the classical era. So we focus on growth, we focus on army and we just play it safe. That of course is the coward's way. The brilliant way, the Ursa way, the bold way is to just go mental. Get the second, maybe even the third city out and just pray we go for the golden age. There are a few things we can do. Of course, we have the Sphinx. We have the Chariot Archer. That is worth eight points already. Wonders are good. Religions are good. Pantheons are good. More importantly though, exploring. Exploring is good. There are 20 civilizations on the map. Each one will give me an era score for unlocking. We want a suzerain city-states, although there aren't many city-states on this map, admittedly. Just the nine, because we are limited again to true start location. So city-states we might be a little bit squished with. I can get boats. I could build perfect districts. There's going to be a lot of conflicting factors. Uh, barbarian encampments and tribal huts, also good sources of era score. But because of this, I think I might go for the fabled triple scout start. The idea being that I want to keep my warrior roughly around my capital, just in case barbarians come in my direction, in case Venetia is on this map. Phoenicia spells trouble for any Egyptian start because they will rock on down with biremes and just destroy you. I think three scouts is going to get me out and enough. Yeah, keeping this warrior around, that puts one scout into Africa, one scout down the Nile, one scout to go and meet people into Europe. The other thing I need to think about is tech and civic shuffle mode. It means I don't know where the techs are. I have to use Eurekas and Inspirations to figure out what is going on. Now, I already know sailing is there. Animal Husbandry has three techs on it. Mining has two. Pottery, just the one. I don't, however, need pottery, really, to get to this tech. So it looks like Animal Husbandry and Mining are the more important choices. Of course, horses. Any discovery of horses means I can get more production. Mining means that I could work the stone. There's also jade. I need irrigation eventually. It's a lot of conflicting choices, but I'm going to go Animal Husbandry. It unlocks sailing. I could, in theory, start to get some galleys. Galleys are good. I could go and meet Phoenicia, Ottomans, Byzantium, Greece, Rome, all on the coast. I could head in the other direction. We could just go and explore anything we can do to get era score. Era score is by far the most important thing for us to do right now. You know what I'm thinking about this start? I, I feel like we might be a little stoned. This start is so difficult. I'm feeling a little bit jaded. There are so many resources here. I could get drunk off them. Ah, yes. It's these puns. That's why you watch the channel. <laughs> Not even puns, really, are they? So there is the continent split, foreign trade, Africa and Asia. It's always an option for me. I can go and settle my first city on a different continent. If Phoenicia is here, I'm not sure if they are here, but if they are, they will not like me settling a city there. Just, just putting that out there now. Dead Sea means that I found Jerusalem. Perfect. And I don't have an envoy with Jerusalem. Okay, that means Phoenicia is in the game. They want a chariot archer though. That is something I can do, Jerusalem. Yes, okay, right, my warrior, I'm gonna keep around my capital. I'm gonna send, as I say, the scouts out to do the exploring. Where did astrology get put? Down there. Oh, okay. Now, Stonehenge is a possibility. I could go for Stonehenge. There's two stone, which means there are three realistic spaces that Stonehenge could go down. Now, the reason I put them over the forest is because look, I'd have to go through mining anyway. So I can clear the forest if I want to. The issue though, is look at the way that the natural luxuries have been put into this area. If I want to get a really industrious plan, a really industrious set of cities, I need to aqueduct the smidge out of this game. I need to put a lot of aqueducts down and ideally I want to be able to put a lot of aqueducts kind of in, a, in an arrangement that a lot of cities can benefit from them. This is really the only real possible aqueduct I can put down. That means I think it's got to be that tile for Stonehenge if I did go for it because this one I'd want to put an industrial zone down so that I could in theory get another aqueduct in that direction and maybe put a city on one of these two. In fact actually what I could do is city there. I could then do this and do the old regular triple aqueduct play. I was thinking Temple of Artemis. I do have a deer. That is a possibility. It's not a bad production start. If I improve a lot of tiles, but I'm not, I'm going to come back to this in a little bit because I don't know enough about the map at the moment. I'm making too many plans. 
We need to just explore it a little bit more, see what we can do. Right, do I want to explore Africa or the Nile first? Let's go down the Nile first. I think that's probably the better move for me. And then I could jump straight into a Sattler, but I want to be pretty secure in what I'm doing. We're going to go for the Double Scout. I, I really, this is a huge map. I need all the information we can get. I really do. Now the Nile on this map is incredibly long and it's a very thin strip of usable land surrounded by a lot of desert. There is a lot of desert on this map. It's not going to be very useful. So my empire is going to be quite long and stringy we're gonna have a lot of problems with barbarians like a huge amount of problems with barbarians what is animal husbandry unlocked there is the chariot archer now that is a way of getting jerusalem on side if i wanted to go armani not a bad option there if i do want to go for the religion play though that could be the way of doing it do we go for stonehenge it's 20 players the chances of me getting it are slim but i think i want to unlock mining anyway so that i can get the stone on side i can get rid of the forest this has got to be the play for me at the moment so yeah let's do this what i'm hoping as well is that i'm gonna find a lovely juicy tribal village and i can enlist the help of some builders i can find a builder from that that'll be a very useful thing as well the first tribal village now this is worth one era score we've got to find as many of these as we can this one is on the nile i would take a builder at this point i would take population i would take faith i would take gold ideally i don't really want a eureka or an inspiration or anything like that i would take another scout probably as well it looked like i was doing something very clever there but that was a total misclick oh barbarian encampment right by my city oh i'm gonna need some defenses i do not trust myself to keep myself alive against that one code of laws always go god king celebrate yourself put yourself on the pedestal of deity that you deserve to be you need the faith become the god i have three scouts so survey feels alien but i want that actually hey hey you know what that wasn't a misclick <laughs> That was a deliberate delay so that I could get myself a double experience card. Cough. Envoy. There we go. That's really handy. No messing around. No waiting. One Envoy of Jerusalem. Now I have one faith per turn. Added to my God King. That is two. We'll get a nice pantheon nice and quickly. How is the civic tree looking? Uh, no sign of sphinxes, which is a little bit concerning, but we do have access to a very early governor title. What's more important, maritime industries and the extra gold from trade routes or the settler card? I think the settler card has got to be it. We need to use these boosts as much as we can, by the way. The other thing that I didn't mention and is really important is on Dramatic Ages mode, there are a couple of other ways of getting era score. One of them is every time you get a tech or a civic, you get one era score. And I think every time you level up a unit past a certain point, I can never remember how experienced they have to be. Is it like level two or level three? Oh, there we go. One era score every promotion after the unit's first promotion. Okie dokie. There's also, this is what we're looking at at the moment. Deity, 40% of human cities lost only 10 percent of ai cities lost five times loyalty pressure from three cities Ew. we've got to go gold to gold to gold this game is going to be either a scrappy survival series or an exercise in dramatic golden age management of perfection i don't know which way it'll go right now i'm looking for the sahara wonder it's either there or it's there i can never remember the eagle-eyed among you will notice that we have there it is knew it was somewhere as i say the eagle-eyed among you will notice that we have played this map as egypt before we were using the civilizations expanded version of egypt then it was rather silly this is base game this is the sensible way of doing it okay we are hmm, 17 turns in we have a minimum of 24 left and i only have seven of my overscore do i think that i'm going to get a golden age or do i go for the settler at this point i say we've got to go hard or go home and that's what i plan on doing we're gonna go and settle out question is do i settle now first or do i get the builder first because what i can do is you can see that i'm working three unimproved tiles i could be getting two gold one production and probably i could buy another tile there get some more production that would help my yeah that would help myself great oh, there you go three builders actually three builders would be really really handy as i said a nile as well super long this game lots of luxury scattered all along it now we don't have monopolies mode on today which is a shame because i have seemingly every source of jade on the map 
Ooh, it unlocked writing as well. Astrology. I think we've got to go. Have we got to try and get Stonehenge? I just, I feel good about it. I feel like maybe today is our day. This could be the way of getting first religion and also the era score for getting a beautiful wonder. And Stonehenge as well would give me 30% of the production cost as culture. That's 54 culture. And just to put that into perspective, that would give me an entire civic unboosted. That's a big amount of culture. It's tempting, isn't it? Tempting to give it a go. Oh, barbarians. Barbarians across the desert, never fun. I'm gonna leave them alone. See if we can just avoid them with my scouts. Don't plan on fighting at all. We're looking for tribal huts. And that is about it. I'm pulling my warrior back. I don't trust that barbarian encampment. If we can go and kill that, that would be great. Look, oh, that was a desert storm just absolutely going around. Desert storms may be our friends. Later into the game, we could be finding some very big yields. Look at all this. Look at all this extra food and production scattered across the desert. Now, admittedly, we're going to have to have a lot of storms to make the desert worth settling in. Like a lot. But you never know. It may turn this useless part of the map into something very useful for me. Look at how little arable land is on this river though. This is all desert. Oh man, unless we do go preserve heavy, which I'm really not tempted to because we just did such a preserve ma um, map. If you want preserves, by the way, go back and have a look at my Cleopatra game. It was r rather ridiculous. But I fancy just hard industry, you know? Real industrial might this game. Another barbarian encampment. No, like I found one tribal village so far and I've explored a lot of the map. Come on game. You should put down more for me. Oh, the scout has found me. Oh, just as my warrior has arrived. It's not good. Actually, one thing I'm going to do whilst I'm over at this side of the map is I'm just going to move my scout over to reveal the edge. That means if we do send a boat out later, we can get the circumnavigation bonus. This is picking up era score for later, you know? We've got, we've got our brains on today. Oh, a tribal village. Thank goodness, because I was getting very little there and I was getting a little bit worried. Again, I take population, I take a builder, I take another scout. 20 faith. A couple of turns off the Pantheon there. That's not too bad, actually, but the era score is kind of what we're looking for, so that is fine. Okay, builder, go and improve that deer. That's wonderful. I think we've got to go for actually getting a Sattler out now, haven't we? Let's expand. Let's get out there. 15% of all of the production cost of buildings, remember, becomes a good burst of culture, so completing a monument would give me nine culture. Represents about five turns worth of culture at the moment, so it's a big boost. It's really big, but getting the Sattler out for now, I think, is the more urgent thing. And as much as I'd like to go and expand and, and, and search down there, actually, Arabia might be down there. I, I want to be going north because there's more people to the north. Maybe if I just find Arabia, if they do exist, they may not even be in the game, to be fair. Maybe they'll get some tribal huts. Oh no, Arabia are in the game. First meeting. Hello, honored to meet you. I'd love to sample your hospitality. There is Baghdad. Round a volcano. Oh, blimey, brave. Very brave being there. There is the edge of the map, by the way. Okay, okay, I'll explore north, but that's a good thing for later. Now, what are these barbarians doing? If I stand on this hill, maybe they'll come and attack me out of their camp on the hill. You never know. Could get lucky. Oh, and another tribal village. Perfect. There's a couple of really decent sources of era score we just saw there. Just meeting Baghdad, finding a tribal hut. It's all we need just to be ticking along. Plus a pantheon. Now, unfortunately, the desert pantheon has been taken. So no holy sites in the desert. Probably for the best there. Now, I didn't mention it at the time, but there were no horses around my capital. There are some down the Nile occasionally, but not many strategics at the moment. So I'm thinking goddess of the hunt, maybe not so good. Also, for a TSL map, a distinct lack of floodplain in here. So Lady of the Reeds and Marshes might not be as useful as you would expect it to be on a Nile map. Never mind. Production from fishing boats would be good if we stick to the Mediterranean itself. Goddess of the Hunt, one food and one production from my deer camp. Now that is a big deal, but we only have the one camp improvement around us. And actually we don't really have anything else that I can see at all. No, totally useless. It's mines. Mines over bonus resources and quarries. It would be this. Religious idols. Mines over luxury and bonus resources resources it would give me more faith not really ideal culture from plantations that could be something or we could go straight to monuments of the gods and just see if we can get stonehenge fertility rights that would be a very egyptian thing wouldn't it a free builder and also 10 percent extra city growth rate i'm kind of torn 
I like fertility rights a lot. 10% extra city growth is one of those things that you sort of sit back and don't think about and every single city across your empire over the course of the game will just be a little bit bigger. It's really handy. Monuments of the Gods stops. It only works for ancient and classical era wonders, but having a wonder on a river already gives me 15% production bonus. This would make it 30%. If I'm going to rock on with Stonehenge, maybe that's what I need to do. Do we go Monuments of the Gods? I don't really go for this one. This is a bit different. So yeah, you know what? I think we've got to do it. I think we just got to go and do it. Monuments of the Gods, let's rock this on. I'm keeping an eye out for other wonders that I can build. Now, pyramids, obviously, is a really good idea. I mean, we have a lot of desert around us and getting more builders would be great. I can technically build it in my capital. Now, it wouldn't be next to a river, but it is technically possible, although it looks like another city over in this area would probably do better there. Yep, Phoenicia's in the game, by the way. It just spotted them on the northern borders of Jerusalem. No, not Carthage. But we haven't found Hanging Gardens, which is one I was sort of thinking about trying to swipe. That wouldn't be too bad an idea. Uh, nothing for Etamananki. We haven't got any floodplain or any marsh, so nothing like that. Oracle, that could be something to build. Uh, there's options. We, we have options here. I'm heading towards Pyramids. I, the chances of me getting it are unlikely, but I just feel like if it's there and it's giving it to me as an option, I gotta at least try. I'm playing as Egypt, you know? If I don't get if I don't get pyramids today, then when will I get it? Now what's in this tribal village? 20 faith. That is, I don't want to say useless, but I can't think of another word that describes that, so useless may, may be the one. Oh, the barbs are attacking my warrior, but I fortified on a hill, and now that I have battle cry. So this is what I want them to be doing, attacking me. If I can kill that barbarian encampment, that is very valuable era score. I need to get off working early empire now. That's a little bit unfortunate. Oh man, I can just skip straight through to state workforce. That's really weird. Corvivo would be amazing. Do I want to put my... Oh, you see, I've got to... I have to chop out this forest. Has to be done. That's where I was going to put Stonehenge. So, 25 production. That would be not enough to get the settler. Or I could throw the production on Stonehenge, where the production counts for more. Oh, that is a difficult choice. I don't know what the right answer is, but the risk is the Golden Age. And the Golden Age, I will clear by... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to Stonehenge this. So I will get rid of the production queue. I will now chop, which means the production flows over to Stonehenge. I'll pop it down. As you can see, it says 15 turns at the moment, but I'm working some really naff tiles. I need another builder in there. If I, if I can get another builder, that would be awesome. That's Carthage, by the way. Hello, honored to meet you. Yes, I'd love to sample your hospitality. Yummy. Oh, 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 oh. I was doing so well, but we've just spawned another warrior. Oh, that's no fun. I'm going to have to run away. That's unfortunate. Okay, never mind. So the barbarians have chased me, but they've done it in a way that means that actually I can get onto the hill without being attacked. So I think I can save that warrior just about. That scout, on the other hand, just got flooded. So much for Egypt being immune to floods. Oh, my units are... Oh, it's always tempting, isn't it? I mean, it's a scout. I, I would not survive a slinger attack and then a warrior. Not possible, but... They're just tempting me, Venetia. They know exactly what they're doing. They're like, go on then, do you want this? And I'm like, yes, I do want the Settler. Gilgamesh is in the game. Sumeria, oh, 27 and 15 with science and culture. Wow, doing nicely. Well, you know what this means. Anytime you meet Gilgamesh, activate Operation Gilgabro. Always happy to accept friendship. Of course you are. Okay, I have at least one friend on this map. Always a good thing. What did Pottery unlock? Irrigation. Okay. Well, irrigation is interesting. Uh, that would give me access to hanging gardens, of which would be quite a useful wonder and quite an easy one to build, potentially. I think I might do that. Uh, the other option is to go for sailing, because just a single galley would give me a bunch of era score, and it would actually increase the defences of my city quite considerably if Carthage were to decide to attack me. Not that I'm saying they would, but they absolutely would. What is the era looking like at the moment? Minimum of 10 turns. Still have 9 era score left. Do I feel confident about this at all? No. No, I do not. I just bought myself another tile to get access to this stone. Looks like etimananki has been finished. Gilgamesh finished it first as well. Slightly concerning. Means that wonders are being claimed and they're being claimed fast. Get on this quickly. Make sure that we get Stonehenge what we want. Okay, right. Ten turns. Nine era score. Otherwise, we're going into the game's first Dark Age. Lovely. Oh, that looks like a barbarian. That looks like another set of barbarians. Scout, I think your time has about come. 
I need to find a lot more people. Georgia will do. Hello. Honor to meet you. Yes, I would love to know where your capital is. All the way over there. Wow, you've uh, wandered quite far. Fair enough. Oh, another tribal hut. Thank goodness. If I'm not finding people, tribal huts are the absolute minimum of what we need to find to get this game going. Ottomans, Byzantium, anyone in that direction would be good to find as well. I'm doing my best to explore with this scout and not die, but I'm getting pinned in and that is annoying. Oh, Georgia, stop it. Don't do that. Why be like that? Oh yeah, no, they've absolutely trapped me here. Goodbye, cruel scout. Cruel world. The scout is going to die. Oh, I picked up a population oh, from that uh, tribal hut. I like that. Oh, maybe it'll give Stonehenge just that little rush. Oh no, dead. Oh dear. I just haven't had anything to trade. I haven't really had much gold. The, the problems with that is that, yeah, I just haven't had an ability to kind of rush this, but we're two turns away now from Stonehenge. Oh, it's agonizingly close. I hate these early games where, where you're just... <laughs> you're just waiting. Turn by turn for a wonder to be poached. Oh dear. Dear. Okay, got poached. To me, it was Georgia. They denounced me and then built Stonehenge. Oh, come now. Oh, and they put choral music in it and everything. That would have been such a huge, huge burst of culture for me. Oh, Georgia, you absolute muppet. How could you? I could get a holy site. I could just one turn a holy site now out of frustration. But I think probably just one turning the settler is probably a better use of that overflow production. Ugh. I mean, I probably was going to hit a golden age with that because that would have been three era score to 21. I then would have made the world's first religion, which I think is either three or four. So that would have been a golden age. I think I might have been condemned into a dark age this time around. But it's okay. Dark ages are fine. If you have no cities, you can't lose them. So, you know, that's that's okay in itself. It's going to be one of those games. This is always the risk, though. Always the risk of a 20 player game. We knew that we weren't going to be able to just walk away with any wonder we could have done or in any wonder possible it's always going to be a little bit of a risk let's go instead and uh, i might just conveniently wait a couple turns before settling so i don't lose the city but we'll let it plop itself down um, i'm picking up irrigation uh, sailing sorry i think i might actually just go for irrigation unless there's a farmable resource there is a farmable resource i can do with that one okay let's go sailing then so we'll do that. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to head down in this direction. We've got lots and lots of luxuries I will be able to pick up in a second. I think the classical era will be the area in which we will thrive quite considerably. Tough start. But, you know, it's tough starts. Make it all the better. Okay, Ottomans are in the game. There is Hattusa. Stonehenge is done. Oracle is done. A lot of the wonders that we were thinking about are just turn by turn being finished now, which is ever so slightly painful to see. But it's okay. Don't worry, Ursa, Ursa will always, always return with a smile. A pained, pained smile. Or looking from afar at all of the wonders that have been built in other people's countries that he wanted to build. It's fine. Don't worry about it. There is Suleiman. I think, unfortunately, that will count as meeting him in this era, which is a little unfortunate. Oh, and there's a slinger. That is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. I wanted to not have to deal with barbarian slingers. Everyone's in a golden age. Okay, it's just me in a dark age, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem. We can ride the dark age. We can ride it quite nicely. Now, as soon as I get a government, I'm going to get access to a lot of dark age policy cards, which is always very funny. But until that point, I think the best thing I can do is just plonk down city number two. That gives me early empire. That means that we can change things around a little bit if we want to. I might give myself a discipline card because survey is really not very useful. Having slightly upgraded scouts... Like, yeah, okay, it's fine, I guess. I can live without it, though. You know, I can live without it. That did give me a governor, though. I think my science and my culture is so rubbish. I need to get Pingala. Now, I only need 14 era score to get this next Dark Age into a, a Golden Age, so that's fine. But Pingala might give me the science and the culture just to try and push out a little bit. Now, I could go Magnus, but I don't think Magnus is needed right now. Yeah, I'm in just desperate need of any resource that gives me culture or science or anything, really. Really. Oh, here come the barbarians. I think I'm going to have to use some of my gold annoying me to get a slinger to try and knock that one away. Oh, and there's a barbarian archer. Eek. No, I don't want to get involved with you, friend. That's that's not a game I want to play. Hanging Gardens is built as well. Fair enough. This slinger is just going to stand and hit me. I like that ambition. That's fine. 
Oh, Arabia has found me, finally. That's, that's both sort of reassuring to see another person around my lands and also horrifying when you realise that they're probably just going to stand and attack me, but never mind. Archery boosted. I think I might need a little bit more of a defence force to go and deal with these barbs, but in seriousness, it is also a very good source of early game era score, so I might have to just go and attack them anyway. I might just spend a turn to get irrigation, and I can start improving some of these luxuries. Oh, there's a tribal hut and a barbarian archer. Yeah, I'm just going for it. Why not? State workforce boost. That's a, a district finish. That's actually really handy. Okay, cool. That's just given me a boost to craftsmanship as well, and pink... Gala can now get myself extra science or culture. What is more helpful? I think I want to get myself sphinxes and I want to do that as quickly as possible. So yeah, you know what? Let's do connoisseur. Use culture to get more culture. It's always the way. Always the way. Oh, two barbarian archers, but somehow, somehow my scout survived on five health. Quick, run with your cats. Run away. Now this is a wine. This is the first thing that I can trade with the AI for nine gold per turn. I will take that gold up front. Thank you so much. And I'm going to return the favor by then buying a luxury from you the less money than I just sold you mine but it's fine it's just how the AI works that's okay I could sell open borders but I'm just gonna save that until I need the money but that is another little burst of gold 440 gold would be to get a settler now that would be very useful I don't think I have the luxury of being able to wait that long though oh that barbarian archer is so tough oh just absolutely hit my archer for ton sorry my, my warrior and there's very little I can do it's got too much range. It just can, it can reach any part of my land. Oh, painful. Uh, tobacco, I'm going to do the same thing. Sell it to Dido and then buy some salt instead. Yeah, that's that sounds good. Just trading luxuries for luxuries. What do I do? If I move my slinger out of the city, oh, there's no way. There's no way I'll survive. Um, I might just wait for this slinger to finish. See if the barbs are going to do something silly. They may do something silly. Often they do. Oh, Pingala's just established. I'm on nine culture per turn now. Oh, man, that is better. That is so much better. I wonder if preserves are the way to get through this game. <laughs> I really don't want to be building preserves again, but maybe it is. No, can't be. I'm just looking for anything I can do here. I really don't have anything I can put campuses down. Campuses are going to go around this area. There's a geothermal fissure. There is a reef. There's a few mountains. We have areas. What I'll do is any, any sort of campus I can see that is at least plus three. It's going to plonk down on the map. There's one, two, three that I can see four over there. So these are going to be the places to generate all of my science. Like, there's a few of them around here. Oh, no, that's uh, not even a plus three. Oh, actually, nope, there's more. I scrapped that. There's more. And there's probably a tile there as well. So ignore ignore the exact numbers around here. It's more just the idea that there are reefs and there are mountains all along this coast. So I've got to survive the desert a little bit. But I think going harbours, harbours, commercial hubs and campuses. This is going to be the thing to do. Harbour in my capital, probably to get some boats out. Industrial zones. Yeah, this is going to be a funny old game. We're going to have to be building some really odd things, but I think we can get this to work if we're careful. Let's go mysticism. That gives me another envoy. Actually, my chariot arches round about now would be really, really handy. Okay, silly thing has been done. They moved to attack my city with the warrior, thus giving me enough emphasis Look at that, take on and kill that unit. That's good. Pyramids has been finished, by the way. Oh, that's really annoying. Every wonder's gone. Not, not a problem, not a problem. If I harbour on that tile, if I did want to get temple, uh, sorry, mausoleum, it would have to go there. That means realistically we're looking at popping in a theatre square, maybe on this tile. I don't know what would, well that's a Broadway. Would that be a good thing to do? Maybe I could go Colosseum. Maybe that would be not a bad move. Like that sort of thing. That would be in range of quite a few cities around here. Yeah, the plan is evolving. It is, it is an ever-evolving plan, but, you know, I do have a plan, in theory. If I say it enough, maybe maybe I'll believe it eventually. I have a plan, I promise. I want to put the government plaza down. I do want a government plaza, but I'm thinking now I might do the usual trick of having a Pingala city and then a Magna city. The Magnus can print the settlers with the government plaza city in it, and I don't have to be popping one in the yeah no i think i'm gonna do that so instead 
I need more culture. I need more culture. I need more army. I need a lot of stuff. If I get the monument, that would give me another turn's worth of culture just as a boost. Plus, it would give me another two culture per turn. I might just do that just to make sure that this city is firing as much culture off as possible. And then we'll go minor resource into wheel. I'm just keeping the builder around in case this archer decides that it wants to pillage that tile. I don't know if it will. Oh yeah, no, the archer moved in order to attack my warrior, which is great because now I have full access to attack fully i'm going to move on to the woods and we're going to go one two and i'm going to see if i can get the archer to distract itself by moving my builder to the right of it maybe they'll get confused and go oh look a target and attack it and then i'll be like mwahaha the fearsome war cry of ursa mwahaha oh there goes temple of artemis <sighs> and i thought i thought we were going to have some wonder building today yes they fell through it. They absolutely fell through it. Good. That means I can now cross the river with the warrior, get the kill, steal the builder back. Now, that warrior might be a problem. It might go and try and kill my warrior. I don't like the sound of that, really. So I'm going to cross and make a sacrifice play with the slinger to give it something better to attack. It might go for that. I don't know. See how the AI reacts. You never know. Oh, look, look. I've got Harmonia cities, Suleiman. Don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. It's fine. Grievances. Oh, Phoenicia's just killing Jerusalem. All right. Fine. If that's what you want to do. Yeah. Okay. The sacrifice play worked on the slinger. Not that it's a real play that I wanted to make, but it is a play that I made. Ah, uh, knowingly, I need another slinger then before the monument gets finished. What am I working here? Just this improved tile. Okay. Oh, wow. Units moving everywhere. I don't know where that warrior is going, but if you're just going to move your units through my lands like this, that gives me a garrison attack on that warrior. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, you're going to heal one turn. That means... Yeah, if I move my builder back to this tile, my warrior will be able to emerge and kill. Just thinking about this though, Colosseum, is that even a good place to put Colosseum? <sighs> Probably isn't. Oh man, there's another archer and another warrior. Oh my lord, we're being overrun by barbarians at the moment. This is craziness. Let's get an attack in there to give that warrior something to think about, and then I'll attack, steal my builder back. What I've been trying to do is avoid spending my gold on units, because I'm trying to save up to get the settler. So I can get city number three going but this is not I mean the barbarians are really sitting on me this game I am struggling to get out they're gonna archer kill that warrior aren't they and just tell already Ugh. yeah absolutely a second archer has appeared as well it's not good at all um luckily I do have archery almost on the way now I think I might need a gogi I may actually need a gogi to get myself all of these units quicker they're attacking me so hard they left the barbarian encampment open so there we go. I've killed the Barbarian encampment. So there's no more. This is it. The, 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 there are no more reinforcements on the way. But honestly, they are just chucking themselves at me. Oh, well, that warrior did decide to pillage me, which is a bit annoying. Luckily, though, this builder, my, my builder, isn't this builder. It, it, it's not being taken away anywhere. So I do actually still have the option to steal it back if I can just move my army around enough. Just holding my slingers back for a second. We're, we're so close. So close to archery. That's going to be a huge game changer for me. Appease the gods. Look, this is not the time to appease the gods. The gods have been nothing but cruel to me. I guess that actually is probably why I should appease them. Soothsayers are an option. Remember, I can always pull a soothsayer into combat. Um, it would definitely pollute the world really quickly. But, I mean, ultimately, it's not my fault. It's not my problem. If the world is already killing me, it's fine. Uh, let's get this mine going. There's wheel. Now I can get chariot archers, which trust me, chariot archers are good. Oh, that's a bunch of gold. Uh, I can get myself um, some coffee now. That's lovely. 360 gold. Do I just do it? Do I just do it? Oh man, I really don't want to because I'd rather get the gold for a settler. But if I don't, I'm never going to escape, am I? So let's just get the one chariot archer. There we go. We've hit the golden age. That's beautiful. This thing is tough. Oh yeah. 40 strength against barbarians i could we could chariot archer attack and we could just go go kill jerusalem go kill dido let's just we could just go crazy we could just go absolutely mental and say no this game this game has not been fair <laughs> now we're going to get our revenge maybe i should do that here we go chariot archer makes one attack slinger makes a second and that is that unit killed there's this unit killed and i now have a much more maneuverable unit that i will be able to chase down that builder with very quickly it can't escape 
I'm feeling better about this already. A gogi no longer need, uh, sorry, I do need a gogi rather than discipline, so I'm gonna stick that in. It'll speed up my chariot archer and also my warrior. I'm just gonna build a small army now and we can attack back. Still don't know where governments are. Who knows where governments are, but I will unlock the mausoleum just in case, you never know. Here is the archery upgrade. One, two, two archers. Two, uh, one chariot archer, I've got the builder. Oh, I feel better. I feel like suddenly, suddenly I'll be able to hold my own land. Let's get a harbour going. Let's get this monument and then a builder. Gilgamesh, please be my friend. Oh, thank goodness we have at least one friend on this horrible, horrible game. But if we can get our trade up, start to trade with somebody, maybe we'll get a little bit of gold. I don't know. Oh, my builder's just embarked and it's off. All right. Well, I guess I can't just leave it and collect it later. That's, <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> it's gone forever. Oh no, that's actually depressing. It would rather swim away than come back to me. I always like that mentality. It's like, I've been converted once. I am now no longer Egyptian. I'm off, off to sea. We're pirates now. We're going, <laughs> that's it. We've gone. The ballad of the builder and the giant crabs. Where's it going to go? No, it's just going to stay there. It's just literally going to stay there now. Just, it, it, it doesn't want to be part of my empire, but equally it doesn't want to go too far away. Tobacco, improved, perfect. I could sell it for something. Oh, like a lot of horses. I guess that would be a decent deal. It's making both of my cities happy though. So really, do I want to sell it? Do I want to sell it? I don't know right now. I don't know anymore. What do my cities even want to expand? I guess if I go to the next golden age, I could go monumentality and we could try and expand out from there. But honestly, it's such a slow start. I, I have a scout over here as well, but I literally cannot move through this territory. It's so many rivers and mountains. And oh, there's so many city state units. It's just, it's just trapped. I, don't, I think we're gonna need galleys. We're gonna need galleys to go and meet anybody else. As I say, we've got a golden age right now, so I don't need to explore at this precise moment, but something to consider later. Oh, and I don't think I announced it at the time, but I got a lovely nine culture tiny boost just from finishing the monument. Don't worry, Ramesses boost will become very much more important later into the game. So my big problem at the moment is just number of cities. I have two, we have Arabia with seven, Carthage with five, Sumeria with five, Georgia with seven, Ottomans with five. Getting to five cities at the very minimum seems to be something I need to do which is, you know, easier said than done. But we can get it done, I think. Getting this city to a nice amount of population, though, in order to get, like, an encampment out? Maybe an encampment probably would, would be a good thing to do, wouldn't it? Get a celestial navigation done, get bronze working done, get the encampment, get government plaza going in this city as well. There's a lot of stuff that would help a lot. If I'm thinking about it, a government plaza up towards this end of the map would make some really good campuses. So maybe that could be saved for there. It sort of turned into one of those typical games where you look at everything around the map and you're like, what do I need? I and mean, then you think about it for a second and you're like, oh yes, that's right, everything. <laughs> I need everything. <laughs> nothing, nothing seems to have gone perfectly my way so far. It's okay, we'll get this chariot archer done. We'll have another builder. Saving up on the gold again. Nobody's buying tobacco for very much at the moment, but I will get more luxuries very soon. We have so much room to expand. I will get a foothold onto this game eventually. Eventually being the word. Defensive tactics are done. Good. Getting settlers out. Yeah, I, I really want wonders, but I'm just sort of looking through this now and I'm thinking, yeah, get conscription for a bit more gold. We've just got to jump in and get a couple of settlers in my cities. If I buy one, I build one. That's just about enough. And look, there's researcher as well. Look at that. Lovely stuff. Uh, there's political philosophy. That means recorded history, which will unlock me another governor as well. Oh man, yeah, having a government, any government will do really nicely. So we've just put down the builder, got the boost of celestial navigation, we'll get harbors soon. Other than that, I want to get a couple of mines down because that'll get me apprenticeship. I'll work out where apprenticeship is. We can see if we can get industrial zones down. I haven't got any advantage in this game, but if I can be the person that gets the most engineer points and have mausoleum, I can take that. That That is a that is victory in a sense. Trust me, when you had starts like this, any victory in any sense is something you seize onto. You're like, yes, that is absolutely what I want. Uh, do I get the settler first or the harbor? Oh, we'll get the settler down. God, I've got no production in this city whatsoever. Bronze working. Did I at least get a glut of iron? 
No, I really did. Look, look at look at the strategics. Okay, we've got some horses and I in the middle of the desert, a little bit down the Nile, but I am otherwise totally squished in here. This is not not looking good for old Ursa. Second chariot archer. Well, at least if anyone attacks me, I've got a small army now. That's got to be a good thing. Well, there goes Jerusalem. We might be able to get involved in an emergency here. That would give me quite a bit of diplomatic favor. I've got chariot archers. We've got warriors. We're gonna put, yeah, this, this might be a possibility. I mean, peace of the gods, I, I had bigger problems, right? I, <laughs> it was not, not on my list, that. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Dayboy91, Sean Gratiz, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Devil X, Skeptical Bear, Craig Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amir E.C., Rom88, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, L. Truand, Creston, R.B. Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman. Thank you all for your support. It's amazing. See you all next time. Goodbye.